Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and I now am finally back in Milwaukee after Tesla's Battery Day event. I've had a chance to rewatch the presentation, and I want to go through some of the details that we didn't get a chance to cover in the episode on Tuesday. There's also some pretty big news out of California that we'll cover at the end. Pretty wide trading band for Tesla today. There was actually about a 14% intraday swing in the stock price. It finished up 2% to $387.79. That compared to the NASDAQ up 0.4%. All right, so as I said, this episode will build on Tuesday's episode, so go and check that out if you haven't yet. I want to start off with a comment that Elon made pretty early on in, I believe, the annual shareholder meeting portion of the event. He was talking about the amazing progress Tesla has had this year with Giga Shanghai, how quickly they've gone from groundbreaking to volume production, and then he said he believes that over time, they can ramp up Shanghai to produce over 1 million vehicles per year. That would actually be the largest automotive factory in the entire world. Now, those that have followed Tesla closely may not be terribly surprised by that, but I think it is the first time Tesla has confirmed that vehicle production rate target for Shanghai. So it's a good confirmation of that aspiration for Shanghai specifically, but perhaps the more exciting part is that it does start to piece together some of the discussions that we have had around the production capacities for Giga Berlin and for Giga Texas, as well as Tesla's future factories. After mentioning that target for Shanghai, Elon continued to reiterate a point that he has made previously, which is that with each new factory, Tesla tries to get better and better. So they want the project to come online faster. They want the capital efficiency to be greater. And presumably, they want the output to be higher. So, so far, the official plans that we have for Giga Berlin and for Giga Texas mention about half a million vehicles per year. But we have heard whispers that for Giga Berlin, Tesla actually aspires to produce about 2 million vehicles per year from that factory. And as we talked about in a previous episode, instead of 10,000 employees, Jörg Steinbach, the Minister of Economic Affairs for the state of Brandenburg, has said that Tesla eventually may actually employ up to 40,000 employees, which would fit with that 2 million number. The fact that Elon here has said that Gigafactory Shanghai is targeting an output of more than 1 million vehicles per year, I think can give us extremely high confidence that Tesla's target for Giga Berlin is not half a million, but rather something closer to 2 million vehicles per year. And after Elon talked about how rapid the progress was in Giga Berlin, he said that Giga Texas is progressing even faster. It's also possibly worth noting that even though the land area that the factories sit on isn't the most important factor for production output, Texas is the biggest property at 2,100 acres versus Berlin at 740 acres and Shanghai at just 210 acres. At this point, I don't think there's much of a reason to expect Texas output to be less than Giga Berlin or than Giga Shanghai. So between these three factories, it seems highly likely that Tesla is targeting vehicle production rates in excess of 5 million per year. Of course, Giga Texas is going to be producing vehicles with larger battery packs, the Cybertruck and the Semi, so there's a chance that maybe it would produce more batteries and more revenue, but potentially slightly lower vehicle delivery output. But regardless of where that number ends up, it seems pretty clear that Tesla is attempting to build the three largest automotive factories in the world simultaneously. This point becomes even more clear if we look at what Elon said about battery production. He said that their pilot line that they're building for the 4680 cells in Fremont over the next year should scale to about 10 gigawatt hours per year of output, but he said that the actual quote-unquote production plants should be somewhere on the order of around 200 gigawatt hours per year over time, maybe even more. That fits perfectly with the 2 million vehicle per year target, 200 gigawatt hours per year, if we assume 80 kilowatt hours per vehicle pack, that's two and a half million vehicles per year. But of course, some of that needs to be reserved for energy storage. The other interesting implication of that 200 gigawatt hour comment comes when we pair it with Tesla's goal of achieving three terawatt hours of annual battery production by 2030. If each plant is around 200 gigawatt hours, that would mean Tesla aspires to build 15 of those plants. I would expect over time those numbers increase slightly, so maybe Tesla's looking at 10 to 15 factories worldwide. And remember, probably all of those end up being what would be the world's biggest factory today. That's going to cost Tesla a lot of money. And if we look at their presentation, it looks like they actually gave us a hint on how much they expect that to cost them. So one of the slides they showed showed the 20 terawatt hours of annual battery production that they feel is needed to fully convert the automotive and energy markets to full sustainability. They said under the previous assumptions that would have taken 135 gigafactories with a total battery production investment of about $2 trillion. So that's for 20 terawatt hours. Tesla said that they hope their share can be 3 terawatt hours of that by 2030. So that's Tesla taking 15% of that total. So the $2 trillion, 15% of that would be $300 billion. 
but this is where we can pull in some information that Tesla shared later, which is the 69% investment per gigawatt hour reduction that Tesla believes they can achieve with the advancements they discussed at Battery Day. So what Tesla is saying there is that instead of a $300 billion investment for three terawatt hours of annual production, they can actually reduce that by 69%, meaning that $300 billion investment before instead only becomes a $93 billion investment after. So if we spread that investment across the next nine years by 2030, that ends up being about $10 billion invested per year. That is on average, so it'll be less in the early years probably, more in the later years. And remember, that is just for battery production only. That doesn't include the investment needed for vehicle production. But Tesla has given us a lot of numbers here, and analysts can start putting that into their models. If we assume that $93 billion investment is spread, again, across 15 factories, that comes out to about $6 billion per factory, again, just for batteries. But when that investment is paired with investment in vehicle production, energy storage production, those factories in combination should pretty conservatively enable revenues of about $75 billion per year for each factory. So across 15 factories, that again gets us to $1.1 trillion. A relatively modest operating profit of about 6% would mean that each $75 billion in revenue for each factory is generating about $5 billion per year in operating profit and should be even more in free cash flow. So the payback period on those investments would be relatively short. Again, you still have to account for the investment for the actual vehicle production, but it looks like the payback period would be maybe two or three years. Kind of going down the financial rabbit hole a little bit there, but the main point is that if those assumptions are in the ballpark, Tesla shouldn't have too much trouble finding financing for those projects, and a lot of that can be funded with their internal cash flow. Obviously, that is a topic that we will come back to in the future, but for now, let's move on. So one of the points that I mentioned in Tuesday's episode was Tesla not really giving us a whole lot of information on the charging capabilities of these new 4680 cells. But on further review, they did actually share one slide with a little bit of information. They have a graph, again, without much labeling here, which is always annoying, but understandable because they don't want to divulge everything. But on the x-axis, they have cell diameter. So they go from the 21 cell diameter used in the 2170s to the 46 cell diameter used in the 4680s. And then the y-axis, again, not labeled here with any numbers, is listed as supercharger time increase. They show that with a cell design using tabs that the supercharging time increases as cell diameter increases, but they then highlight how the charge time stays pretty much flat with the tabless construction. So during this part of the presentation, Drew said that this quote basically removes the thermal problem from the equation, end quote, but the graph here does still show a slight increase in supercharger time. What then becomes really murky, which I think is probably <laughs> intentional by Tesla, is how all of these other changes to the cathode, the anode, dry battery electrode, end up impacting charging. Tesla throughout this presentation often isolated on one thing and showed the impact of that one thing. So I think this graph here is just showing the impact of the tabless design before factoring in some of these other changes. It's just saying that, hey, that electrical path is reduced under this tabless construction, whereas with the tab design, it would have actually been increased due to that larger diameter. The other sort of oddity of this graph is that it is not presented in terms of kilowatts. So we don't know anything about the peak charge rate. We don't know anything about how the charge curve looks. It just says supercharge time increase. So is that zero to 100? Is that 10% to 60%? We don't know. And as we also heard later in the presentation, Tesla should be able to enable range increases of about 54% with all of these new advancements. And we don't know if that is factored in here on this graph. If it is, and supercharging time remains constant, that means the rate of supercharging would be increasing at right about that 54% level as well. Now, obviously some of that is going to depend on how pack sizes change over time. A larger pack can charge at a higher rate for longer. So even with this graph, we still have a lot of uncertainty around how the charging characteristics of this new cell may have changed. And I think right now, that's probably one of the top questions I have in my mind for Q3 earnings. So let me know what you think about that charging stuff in the comments. The last thing I wanted to point out after rewatching, this was something I pointed out live on Twitter, but I just wanted to reiterate, Elon is very confident in the autopilot rewrite. He said at one point that it's just very clearly going to work. And he again reiterated that a private beta would be out of that new rewrite probably in about a month. So obviously this is something that's not gonna be perfect off the bat, but I am very excited to see what Tesla has done with this rewrite. All right, last thing today is some pretty significant news coming out of California yesterday. Governor Gavin Newsom has signed an executive order 
that will ban the sale of new gasoline and diesel-powered passenger cars in California by 2035. Newsom said on Twitter with this announcement, quote, California will be leading the nation in this effort, joining 15 other countries that have committed to phasing out gasoline-powered cars. We will use our market power to push zero-emission vehicle innovation and drive down costs for everyone, end quote. So a statement there that pretty much is in lockstep with Tesla's goals, and the timing certainly interesting, being one day after Tesla's battery day. This is the trend. This is the direction things are heading in. I'll say it again, the internal combustion engine is dead. Investment in the internal combustion engine is already declining and is going to continue to dry up as more states and more countries move in this direction. A couple other quick things that I meant to mention earlier, just as I'm looking at my notes here. The first is on a possible Tesla HVAC system. Elon was asked about this during the Q&A portion of the event. We've known for a while this is something that Tesla has interest in, but Elon elaborated a bit more on it this time, saying that they've done already so much development that would apply to an HVAC system, using the Model Y heat pump as an example, and said that he doesn't know, but that, quote, maybe we'll start working on that next year, end quote. Obviously, we're still waiting for the Tesla Semi, for the Roadster to come out, Plaid Powertrain. I think that's a little bit later now than anybody expected. Everything going on in Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin, Giga Texas. This is very low on the priority list. It's not something I expect them to start working on next year, at least not with any high amount of focus, probably not much more than they already have started to work on it. But it does seem like something that Elon is excited about. It's something I'm excited about, and it's looking more and more likely that it will happen eventually. We did also hear Elon, in response to Galley's question at the event, talk a little bit about an electric jet. He revisited that topic on Twitter yesterday. He would replied to a video with a bunch of jets flying around and said, jets are so cool. Somebody replied to him saying, make an electric one, like you said you wanted to, in Iron Man 2. And Elon said, quote, maybe I will, dot dot dot, end quote. Personally, I kind of hope Tesla and Elon just go radio silent on that idea completely for like the next five or seven years. And then one day they just pull it out as the most incredible one more thing ever. All right, that'll do it for today. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, September 25th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you. Thank you.